Hello, I'm Dwayne Lesner from the Nutanix Technical Marketing Team, and I want to show you today how to create your own networking environment inside of the AWS VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. We are going to set up all of the needed components to successfully deploy your Nutanix cluster in AWS. Let's get started. What we have here is a typical AWS deployment of Nutanix clusters. We want to create our own subnets and networking schemes uh, from the ground up. So what we're going to do is create a private subnet out of our VPC. So we're going to create a VPC. Inside of that VPC, we'll create two private subnets, one for management and one for our private user VMs. So the user VMs cannot share the same subnets as our management subnet because AHV is going to manage the VMs with IPAM. And then after we create those two subnets, we're going to create a third subnet for our public subnets. This is going to get its own route table. And then after we have that set up, we're going to redirect our traffic from our private subnets to the NAT gateway. And then the default route from the NAT gateway to the internet gateway. What will this get us is the ability to our HV hosts, which are the EC2 instances, are going to be able to communicate to our clusters portal for availability reasons and maintenance. Uh, we're not going to focus on the customer gateway portion. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. So, so I'm just reviewing the requirements from before. We want our clusters portal to talk to console.nutanix.com. Most people do not block outbound uh, SSL, so this should be fine in most cases. And then we want to ensure that our subnets are all associated to the same AZ within AWS. And then just being aware that your subnets that you're creating, we don't want them to overlap with any on-prem subnets. Uh, so this will just help with uh, internet connectivity, especially if you're going to replicate or move any virtual machines from on-prem into the public cloud. So the steps that we're going to take, we're going to create a brand new VPC from scratch. Uh, you can use an existing one, there's that option, and we can also in the UI have an option to do that automatically for you. Uh, so this is just kind of getting into the weeds if you really want to customize your environment. So we're going to create our private subnets for cluster management and our user VMs. We're going to add them to the same route table. Then we're going to create a public site subnet inside the same VPC but we're going to create a new route table for the public subnet. So both private and public will have different route tables and then we'll associate our public subnet to the public route table. Then we will create a NAT gateway and we'll redirect traffic uh, from our private subnets to the NAT gateway. And then we'll create an internet gateway in our VPC. And then we will route any traffic from the public subnet to the internet gateway. Let's get started. So we're going to create a new VPC in the Canada region. So we'll go to VPC. We'll go into the VPC section. So we'll see the default one that comes with your account. I will create a new one. I will call this Nutanix clusters. Um, I'm going to do a slash 16 just so it's quite large and we'll leave everything else the same. So we have our VPC created. Now we can go and create some subnets. So we'll create our management subnet. inside of our clusters VPC. We're going to put everything into the AZ1 subnet. So when we do our deployment, that's where our cluster is going to go. Um, so this management subnet, we can give dot one two. We'll just do a slash 24, uh, give us some room for expanding out the clusters if we want to. 
you can deploy multiple clusters. You can use that same management subnet. It's just the UVM subnets that you don't want to have the overlap with. So now we'll do uh, user VMs. So maybe we're deploying a uh, VDI workload with our Nutanix cluster into the same AZ again. Uh, this time we can go dot two. Hit create. And now we need our public subnet created. Same VPC again, uh, into the same AZ. And then this one, uh, we can actually leave it at zero, dot zero slash 24. So we have our three subnets that we want. Now we want to ensure that these public and the other two subnets are in their own route tables. So we're going to have one default one created for our environment. It's good to leave the private subnets in the default one. So we'll create another route table. Just <clears throat> hit create. And so now we can go into that route table and associate our public subnet. So now they are going to be in two different route tables. If we check and then this one, um, we'll just edit here. So we just have that squared away in case you have to do troubleshooting later. Uh, and then if we go into the subnet associations, we have um, them already showing up here, but they, they are associated with the main route table. So we can explicitly define them as well. So edit subnet associations, um, and then better safe than sorry. So we'll just hit save. So that take care of doing the subnet creations and the route tables. Now we want to assign a NAT gateway. So we'll create a NAT gateway in our public subnet. So clusters, Canada NAT, pick a subnet into our private subnet. So here's our public one that we created. Allocate an elastic IP, which will happen automatically. Uh, create our NAT gateway. <clears throat> um, so now we can go into our route table for our private environment and add a route. So in this route table, anything that's not staying local, we want to send to the NAT gateway. So do subnet mass that will send all the traffic to our NAT gateway. <clears throat> So now our traffic can get into the NAT gateway. And now we just need to create a internet gateway <clears throat> for our environment. Um, looks like one's attached, but that's not the one for our environment. So hit create. Now we need to attach it to our VPC, attach clusters. And so now that we have the internet gateway created, we go back to our route table for our public environment and we will add a route table. So anything like before, anything else that's not staying local, we want to send that out to our internet gateway. Hit save. And now our environment should be ready for deployment. Now let's just take a quick look at our environment and ensure that we're seeing those new options that we just created. So we're in our clusters portal. If we go create cluster, um, so we already have our cloud provider and account set up. If we pick the Canadian region, Montreal, we see that our Nutanix clusters, dot 66 is now showing up. 
and we just need to pick the management subnet. And you can also see some safety that we're blocking out the public subnet. And so now we can deploy our cluster into AWS in the Canadian region. Now that we have the networking configured on our cluster in AWS, we can deploy virtual machines natively onto the cluster, or we can start replicating them using data protection. We could use Nutanix Move, or we could use our Leap, which is our DR orchestration product to move our virtual machines onto our clusters and get to work. Thanks for watching.